Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, so you guys just heard that Pissy Pied Piper meme. So you guys already know what time it is, okay? It's time for another R. Kelly story, honey, okay? So anyways, I want to come on here and talk about the whole Drea Kelly situation. If you guys do not know, Drea Kelly, who was R. Kelly's ex-wife, they got married back in 1996, and they were married until 2009, okay? So she was with them for over 10 years. She recently sat down with the sister circle, and she spoke about how basically she found herself in a domestic abuse situation with R. Kelly, and she's saying that she was being abused by him and she breaks down crying it was just really crazy and really emotional i want you guys to go ahead and try out this video really quick and i'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary well my truth is which, which, which camera do i look directly into uh let's see uh, this my truth here. is robert you don't get to tell my story that is my truth you should have never put me in your book and if you're gonna put me in your book then you're gonna tell the truth in the book you don't get to tell people that we got divorced because I had a problem with being a stay-at-home mom. We got divorced because I was no longer going to sit and be violated. What he did to me was criminal. Why is it important? I mean, it's been, I don't know, 10 years yes. since you have spoken out to anyone, anyone. anyone. about your relationship with R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important to come out now? What is the basis of this stance? The basis of this stance is you have to love somebody enough to tell them enough. And I don't believe that my ex-husband has enough people in his life to be real with him, to be honest with him, who care about his healing, who care about these families' healings. And I feel like it's God's time. I was not strong enough. How can I be a voice for the voiceless when I don't even have my own? How can I be powerful for the powerless when I don't even have my own? Mm -hmm. So I had to wait until God said, okay, daughter, it is time. Mm -hmm. It's like being in boot camp. It's like being in training. I had to go through the trenches. I had to build myself up. I had to go through counseling. Yes. I had to even get to the point to accept and that I am a, a victim of domestic violence. Answer today. What do you want me to do if this is not for me and you want me to leave? What do you want me to do? God, I need an answer today, not tomorrow, not in an hour. I need it now. And the first thing God told me, he said, grab your laptop. And I'm like, oh, God, you tripping a laptop. Are you serious? And once I grabbed the laptop, he said, put in domestic violence. And I'm thinking to myself, but I'm not that girl. I'm not. I'm not the teeth missing. I'm not the broken bone, girl. And God said, keep scrolling. So I kept scrolling, kept scrolling. And at the end of Domestic Violence Awareness website, there was a questionnaire. And there were 17 questions. And they asked you, has your abuser ever done? And of the 17, Robert had done 15 to me. Oh my God. All right, so you guys just saw that video of Andrea Kelly crying and breaking down. Now, on top of that, later on in that episode, she got a chance to meet Joycelyn's parents. As we all know, Joycelyn Savage is a young girl who's a part of R. Kelly's Haram, and that basically R. Kelly has had her now for about a year and a half, and her parents have been trying to rescue her. So they got a chance to meet. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this video as well. Check this out. To know what you went through and to see this family going through what they're going going through with their daughter and your ex-husband. Do you have any advice for the Savage family? I do know that she is loved and she's gonna come out of it because you laid that foundation for her. Keep her prayed <sighs> up. I just want you to know that I'm supported because like you, my family went to the Chicago Sun-Times to Mary Mitchell when they couldn't get in contact with me, my grandfather, my mom, and there was a whole article about it. My order protection I had against him was in the newspaper, but I just want you to know that I stand in the gap for Joycelyn. And I know that I understand it to a level that no police officer, no counselor, no judge, nobody will understand. And we've done well being checks and they've been unsuccessful. And that's why I'm here because my parents did the same and that's what made them go to the Chicago Sun-Times. And we didn't want to go to the media. We had no choice because they think if somebody's over 18, they, you know, they're grown. They're grown. Yes. But we they're know not. our daughter. They're not. We they're know not. she's not 
say we, we do get the call, fruit calls we have got there like prison calls. Really? Yeah. yeah. How do you feel that he's never been prosecuted and now in our society in a sense it's it's constantly repeated itself with him? I think because some he has enablers. Mm -hmm. You know, just to recently to my husband and I had the courage to speak out. A lot of these people have now fleet his camp. Mm -hmm. um, they have been enabling him. Mm -hmm. They enabling him, and then, or either they take small settlements, mm -hmm. a payment, and that's something we refuse to do. Right. Yeah. But like I said, you know, mm -hmm. he doesn't have anybody there to love him enough to mm -hmm. say enough. Drea Kelly loves him enough mm -hmm. to say enough. Mm -hmm. Get help. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's how, when you know that somebody truly, truly loves you, they're not going to enable you. They're not going to just turn Absolutely. a blind eye mm -hmm. and say it's okay. Somebody that truly loves you. They yank your coattails Absolutely. and they tell you, and you know what, if I have to be that person, I get it and I stand in the gap and I understand that I'm a vessel. Yes. I'm so and I'm thankful here to do God's for you work. speaking out. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you, thank you so much. We want to thank you. All right, so you guys just saw the video of Andrea Kelly getting a chance to meet with Jocelyn's parents. And so, you know, everybody's talking about this situation and a lot of folks want to know my opinion on this and how I feel about Andrea Kelly and her crying and her breaking down. And um, I have to keep it all the way 100. And a lot of y'all may not like this video. Y'all might be like, oh, here she goes again, women bashing and, you know, women need to stick together and all that, you know, kumbaya bullshit. But um, I got to keep it all the way 100, okay? Andrea Kelly was married to R. Kelly for over 10 years. And before she was married to him, he had married Aaliyah back in 1994. See, a lot of y'all are still shorty, so y'all don't know the timeline. So this was a big story when it came out that R. Kelly had married Aaliyah. That already should have been a turnout that this grown 27-year-old man would marry a 15-year-old. And, you know, he can lie and say he didn't marry her, but we all know that he was at least fucking Aaliyah, okay? So, but she still chose to marry him. And on top of that, she stayed married to him for 10 years and she bore not one but three children with R. Kelly, okay? For me, people still to this day say, I didn't even know R. Kelly was married. Well, it was. I always say I'm the phantom wife. I met him during his 12 play album. So that was like his first solo album where he was just coming out as R. Kelly. And that was the first tour I did with him. And our worlds came together and we were inseparable from the day I became his choreographer. It, it seemed like it snuck up on me. I was like, okay, I don't know, you are Kelly now. I know you got a lot of girlfriends. We ain't gonna never be together, boo boo. I ran for him from two years, like, mm-mm, no ma'am. Oh no, I don't want to be your girlfriend cause you got about 1,500 of those. And then one day, I don't know, he just wooed me and I looked and I was like, he cute. Okay, man, we might be able to do this. Let me see what we working with. And it just seemed like overnight, it just turned into, and I think because we were friends first, that it was easy because I loved him as my friend. Getting married, we have our first daughter, Joanne. We go on tour, I'm knocked up again. We have Jaya, we go on tour, I'm knocked up again. We have little Robert. So our life, it just went from homeboy, homegirl, dancer, choreographer, fiance, wife. Now we've got kids and nannies. We got a bus with toys and cribs and extra security. And I'm just wigging out because I'm like, how did it go from a girl on the south side getting food from a soup kitchen to R. Kelly's wife? You can't tell me that she was with somebody for 10 years, but yet and still, she was oblivious to all the things that R. Kelly was doing. She was there during the whole sex tape fiasco, okay? So she's talking about R. Kelly has so many yes men around him. Well, you obviously have to be one of those yes men because you're just now calling him out because now it's cool to call him out. Let's not forget, a lot of people never even knew R. Kelly was married to Andrea. 
I had no idea that this woman even existed until she was on the reality TV show Hollywood X's. And during her time on that show, she spent most of the show crying about how R. Kelly basically left her, moved on, cheated on her, and everything else. So now in the Sister Circle interview, she's talking about how she got the strength to leave him and all this domestic violence stuff. And I don't doubt he probably was whooping her ass and putting her through a lot. You know what I'm saying? I don't doubt that. But you didn't leave him, sis. He left you, okay? And I felt like, you know, with her being on Hollywood X's and crying about it all the time, she was upset because she wasn't living that particular lifestyle. You know, granted, she was still getting some money and alimony and stuff like that, but she wasn't getting what she was getting when she was with R. Kelly. It feels good and keep going to his concerts and buying them tickets and them CDs. Boo, that keeps my lights on, girl. Honey, it ain't free out here. What? <laughs> And let's not forget a year ago, this same woman, when people were asking her about the whole Jocelyn Savage situation and, you know, R. Kelly having this whole haram of girls, she was snapping on people. She went off on Moni Love because she said Moni Love had no business bringing up her kids and everything else. She went off about this situation and basically said, you know, R. Kelly can do what the fuck he want to do. Y'all can talk about R. Kelly. He's grown. But now in this situation, it's like she's done a whole 160. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this video from a year ago of Drea Kelly going off on people confronting her about the whole Jocelyn Savage situation. Check this out. Y'all know, Drea Kelly, I don't play when it comes to my goddamn eggs. Now, I got to rip somebody a new ass out. No shade. Might sound shady when I say it. Being the mother that I am, taking my babies to school this morning, I turn on the radio. And usually I don't listen to the radio. Girl cuts on the radio. And, you know, Ed Lover has a new show, and Miss Moni Love is on the radio. And so she does her morning, evening news. And usually, like I said, I don't listen to the radio. I'm usually listening to my CDs or some old, you know, praise and worship, honey, because you're trying to keep a soul level. She goes on to report. Okay, so here we go. So somebody came out the gate. R. Kelly got a 19-year-old girlfriend. Why the fuck are y'all telling me that? Why would I care? First of all, I'm his ex-wife. That's number one. Number two, y'all telling me what he is doing in his life. Who cares? I'm his ex. He can do whatever the fuck he want to do in his life. That's his life. Um, I don't understand why people like to spread venom you could get on my social media and say so many beautiful things wonderful things about life and what's going on and what's good in the world but you wake up in the morning and decide to spread venom and let me tell you something about people who do that y'all quick to say how y'all don't like my ex and he this and he that but then your dumb ass will get up and spread the same bullshit so one or two things are happening Either you just as bad as his ass, or you like being negative, because at the end of the day, you very well could have got on my social media and said, you know what, keep being the mom that you are being, do your thing, girl. But instead, you want to ask me, what do I feel about him having a 19-year-old girlfriend? First of all, I don't know if his girlfriend, and second, I don't, I give zero fucks if that's his girlfriend. That has nothing to do with me. That's why we're exes. That's his life. That's his business. All right, so you guys just saw that video of Drea going off. While I do sympathize with Drea, and I believe her, you know, I believe that she's probably gone through some domestic issues with R. Kelly. And at the end of the day, he's a dog. You know what I mean? He, he dogged her out. He cheated on her. So I definitely empathize with her. But I have to keep it real. You can't be with somebody for 10 years and all these rumors are swirling about. She knew about this stuff. She knew what R. Kelly was doing and she stood idly by. You know what I'm saying? So I have to give her the side eye on all that. You didn't leave him after a year. And on top of that, let's keep it real. She's still using the last name Kelly. How, how much can you remove yourself from the situation and you're still using the man's last name? When you divorce somebody, you, you cut all ties. Leave that name. Like, you know, you're not Tina Turner. He didn't make you. But she's still using the name Kelly because she knows it helps her in the industry, especially with her dance and her business and everything that she's doing. 
So that's why I find it hard to be all the way 100% on her side because one, she's still using his last name. A year ago, she was popping off about anybody asking her about R. Kelly. And now that it's him, not everybody's trying to jump on the whole I hate R. Kelly, you know, bandwagon from the girls who were, you know, ex Haram members and from the girls who were messing with him, like that Kitty Jones. You know, it's like now everybody's trying to distance themselves as if they had no idea what was really going on. But I refuse to believe that after being with R. Kelly, marrying him after the whole Leah's situation that throughout the year she knew nothing about these girls she knew nothing about these other houses that people weren't bringing stuff up to her and telling her things you know what I'm saying so I feel like Drea was well aware of what was going on she's trying to distance herself and she wants to play the victim card so that way nobody can tie her to anything I'm not saying that she was involved with any of these women or involved with anything sexual that R. Kelly was doing that's not what I'm even you know hinting at but what I'm saying is that I refuse to believe that she just didn't know anything I refuse to believe that for 10 years she was just oblivious to all of this stuff that's going on you know I'm not buying that a lot of people knew what R. Kelly was about a lot of people knew what R. Kelly was involved in but they stood by in silence because he made good music and then on top of that he was keeping a lot of folks paid and so I don't want to hear all this mush mouth shit years later now that it's cool, you know what I'm saying, to talk about stuff like this. Now that we have Me Too, because like I said, besides me and maybe like a few other people on social media, nobody was really, you know, calling out R. Kelly on his bullshit. But now that it's cool to do it, now here comes all this R. Kelly information as if people didn't know what this man has been doing for the past 10 years. So, you know, to me, Drea kind of rubbed me the wrong way with this whole situation. You know, I'm glad she's speaking about this. I'm glad she's telling her story but I still got to give sis the side eye and that's just my good instinct that's how I feel about the situation you know what I'm saying I have no issues with Dre I think she's a beautiful woman you know she's very talented but in this situation I got to keep it real so you can agree or disagree but I stand by my stance okay so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation once again concerning Drea not only getting a chance to meet Jocelyn Savage's parents but also talking about how R. Kelly you know abused her throughout the years and her basically playing it off and saying that she was oblivious to everything that was going on so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.